section 12 of claimants to royalty this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by carmen h claimants to royalty by john h ingram the false alexis emperor of the east a d 1186 in gibbon's grand work there is probably no episode more graphically and characteristically described than the story of andronicus commonus and no more helpless a fate than that which the unfortunate young emperor alexis received at the hands of the miscreants the whole narrative comes to us originally from the pen of the historian nicetas who being secretary of state at the time was not only a competent recorder but also a veritable eyewitness of many of the startling incidents he relates. Gibbon merely carries his account of the youthful monarch up to the period of his death, but Nicetas favors his readers with a record of the still more wonderful events which were associated with the name of Alexis long after his real or alleged murder. Upon the death of the renowned Alexis, emperor of the Eastern Empire, his nephew, bearing the same name, was called to the throne. The young monarch, being only thirteen years of age, was placed under the guardianship of his mother, Zinz, and of his cousin, Andronicus, a man of great audacity and courage, but who, despite his royal birth, had suffered innumerable vicissitudes of fortune. Her coadjutor speedily contrived to get the emperor's mother banished, forcing her own son to sign the warrant of exile, and then, still fearful of the poor woman's influence in the state, had her strangled. By these criminal proceedings, having got all the real power of the empire into his own hands, Andronicus determined to secure himself against the probable future competition of his nephew whom he had already compelled to accept him as a colleague in the government by having him murdered. It is surprising how readily the usurper appeared to find men of high position ready to execute his nefarious schemes. Amongst the names of five wretches who are recorded to have assassinated their youthful sovereign is that of John Cometerus, who subsequently became patriarch of Bulgaria and that of a secretary of state. Three of the murderers are said to have strangled the boy with a bowstring, and to have been subsequently assisted by two others to fling the body into the sea. After the assassination had been completed, Andronicus wished to build the body of his deceased relative, who was only fifteen at the date of his murder. Upon the corpse being brought into his presence, the inhuman monster is recorded to have spurned it with his foot and to have used opprobrious language to it and of its dead parents the head it is averred was then severed from the body and after having been mutilated and stamped with the imperial seal was flung out of doors whilst the rest of the poor lad's remains were enclosed in a leaden chest and were as above remarked flung into the sea this almost incredible tale of horror is but one out of the many terrible crimes imputed to andronicus who amongst other deeds is alleged to have obtained forcible possession of agnes daughter of louis the seventh of france the wife or rather the betrothed of the murdered alexis in a little while and the cup of his enormity was full before the third year of his tyranny had expired the discovery of his intention to have isaac angelus a person of great popularity assassinated drove that nobleman into open rebellion the populace espoused his cause placed him on the throne and having discovered and seized andronicus put him to death by means of tortures too horrible to detail some two years or so elapsed during which time isaac angelus remained in unopposed possession of the imperial throne when suddenly a most unexpected claimant appeared in the person of a handsome young man of about twenty years of age who proclaimed himself to be the emperor alexis supposed to have been murdered some years before travelling from land to land in order to obtain armed assistance for the recovery of his alleged rights he ultimately arrived in armenia then under the dominion of the old sultan saladin 
the mohammedan sovereign was only too pleased at the prospect of a war with his christian neighbors he at once promised the needed assistance asserting that it should not be said of him that he allowed so noble and accomplished a prince who was moreover the son of his old friend the emperor emmanuel to go wandering about the earth the spoil of his fine empire by a relative's cruelty as soon as it was known that saladin was raising troops with a view of assisting the claimant to make war upon the empire isaac sent an ambassador to beg him not to allow an impostor to deceive him into supporting so bad a cause the sultan caused the ambassador to be introduced to the pseudo alexis who regarded the envoy with great hauteur and reproached him fiercely for undertaking the commission of the man who was beholding from his legitimate monarch the rights which heaven had given him indeed to such an extent did his real or simulated rage carry him that had he not been beheld he would have torn the ambassador's beard whereupon saladin stopped the interview dismissing the ambassador with the assurance that he was resolved to support the cause of his guest unto the utmost aided by the sultan the pretender alexis set to work to raise troops and in a short time found himself at the head of eight thousand well-equipped and determined men he soon became the idol of his little host which gradually swelling by the incorporation of several bands of redoubtable warriors speedily assumed the proportions of a regal army having many able officers and experienced soldiers with him he was unable to assume the offensive with great success and in a short time took several cities and fortified places by assault in helont his victorious arms met with great resistance which so enraged him that he put everybody to the sword and destroyed the towns by fire his success doubtless procured him many adherents but there is every reason to believe numbers flocked to his banners in the belief that he was the veritable person he pretended to be he bore a strong resemblance to the diseased prince especially in the colour and beauty of his hair and the hesitation or stutter in his voice prince alexis brother of the emperor isaac who commanded the army sent to oppose his progress hesitated to give him battle preferring stratagem to open warfare at last a priest who was in the service of the pretender was suborn to relieve the imperialists of their powerful foe waiting his opportunity he one night surprised his master sleeping soundly after the day's exertions and with his own sabre severed his head from the body the traitor carried his ghastly spoil to the emperor's brother who was surprised at the remarkable resemblance which it bore to the head and features of the unfortunate alexis parting says nicetas the fair locks of the severed head with his whip handle the imperial prince remarked that it was not without reason that several towns had received the impostor as their lawful sovereign but he added he is now punished for his crimes it is strange but not unparalleled that soon after the death of this claimant to the name and title of the young emperor another impostor appeared in perplegonia and collected a very large number of partisans together but after a short course of rapine and murder he was defeated and slain by the imperial general end of the fourth alexis emperor of the east